Hey guys, thanks for tuning back into Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviews with sometimes a comedic touch. Today I am remastering up a old interview I did with Josh Todd about Jerry. They interviewed Josh a few times. Uh, I'm doing that because my channel is really growing now. Uh, please subscribe, hit the notification uh, bell and the uh, like button. Um, I'm getting close to that 1,000 subscriber uh, plateau. Um, it is gradually and consistently moving up. Every other day, I'm getting a few new subscribers. So we're going to get there um, very soon. So please do that for me so you get these interviews. Um, the first six or seven interviews I did via Zoom was, for me, a learning process. I had terrible lighting, terrible audio. Uh, I, I had no editing experience. I'm um, pretty fluent with DaVinci Resolve um and canva and all that stuff i can do that like the back of my hand now these days i'm still learning but i'm as you see my uh, recent interviews over the last year are just uh really um professionally looking so this one here i thought i'd go back in and uh touch it up a bit i have to say at the beginning um i threw in a couple little jabs at josh but he was having a bad day but so was i when i read when i re when i went and watched that interview uh, a couple times he was a little annoyed and I think he could have been annoyed because he was having a presser day where they do 15 or 17 uh, interviews in the course of uh, uh, two days, 20 minute spans, and they get asked the same uh, questions. And so I can understand now that he was a little annoyed. Uh, but having said that, it's a comedic channel, so I had to throw in a little bit of boof, Josh. So anyways, near the end of the interview, you can see that uh, I successfully got him to warm up to me, and he is the uh, decent guy that uh, we all know. So please, without further ado, I bring to you Josh Todd and Buck Cherry. And by the way, they have a new album coming out, Volume 10, and I'm going to try to get a hold of Josh in the next uh, few weeks to uh, see if we can get him back on and promote that. All right. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and here we go. Got Josh Todd here at Buck Cherry. Uh, spoke to Josh a couple of years ago, I believe. Josh, you guys are playing in Sue Mish um, with Pop Evil at Kuwait. And you remember that? Well, obviously, you remember the show, but uh, yeah, it was a great show. I, you know what? When I went into that interview, I thought you guys would have been a headliner, and I wish you would have been, but you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, Pop Evil is a great band as well, so that's uh, it's all good. So we'll get into War Paint uh, in a second here, Josh. Uh, or excuse me, not War Paint, Hellbound. Uh, I keep thinking War Paint because you guys are supposed to be in the Sioux, Ontario. Cup, you know, a couple times it got pushed back, but so now you got Hellbound out. Um, well, actually, you know what? Let's go with that. We can uh, circle back to the other stuff. I want to ask you, um, who's in the lineup for Hellbound right now? You don't know who's in the lineup? I do, but some of the viewers might not know. They're living under... English There's only one Olympics. only one new person, Billy Rowe. Okay, yeah. No, it's all good. I mean, I know the background, but I mean, some of the, the viewers might not know. Um, so we understand that uh, you are very interested. Well, and I spoke with you a couple of years ago. Uh, Minor Threat was one of your influences. So um, you're, from what I'm gathering, is um, you're interested in uh, fronting them in a reunion. Is that correct? No, I never said anything about that. I don't know why that's all over the internet. It is I all said, over uh, the internet, yeah. Yeah, oh. no. Well, no, yeah. I mean, I no, I said uh, I love Minor Threat. I wish yeah. they would go out and do shows. That would be amazing. Yeah. And, uh, what, you know, if if Ian wasn't interested in doing shows with Minor Threat, I would do shows with Minor Threat. That's how much I love them. That's all I said. I didn't say I'm doing a Minor Threat reunion or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, that's the shitty thing about the internet and uh, headlines and fake news. People, they, they run with it. And, you know, I, I, you know, I apologize. I was in that boat. I only have so much time to prep for some of these interviews. I know everything about Buck Cherry and Josh Todd, and there's some things that I only can get uh, piecemeal, and that was one of them. So, yeah, I apologize. Um, mm. So it looks like your show's been canceled. Uh, I guess you would have been in Michigan today playing in Detroit, um, how are the guys in the band? Are, are they pretty healthy right now? They're just quarantining and that sort of thing? Oh, yeah. Everybody's good. Everybody's tested negative since uh, there's just two guys, yeah, uh, well, Stevie I, and Francis. 
Yeah. Okay. So when do you guys, uh, when will you guys pick up and um, go back on the road? Do you have uh, your first show date specified or are you guys waiting? Yeah, yeah. We go, we go back on the 29th. First show is on the 30th. Okay. Perfect. Um, and then you'll be rounding out into Canada, um, part of that tour and coming into Sioux, Ontario at Blaster. Looking forward to yeah. that. Um, when was the last time you were up touring in Canada, Josh? Oh, had it been on uh, War Paint, I think we got up there, I want to say. Uh, maybe 2019, I'm not positive, though. Right, right. Um, so the fans are obviously looking forward to that. Um, Hellbound um, is the news release. So what are you guys going to be doing since the uh, the War Paint um, extensive tour to support that? This kind of, you know, kibosh. Are you guys going to be doing a set list, combining the two with some of your obvious hits the fans want to hear? Or how's that working out? Well, as you know, we have an amazing new record that just dropped. It's called Hellbound. So yeah. um, it's our ninth record, and we're out there promoting this record. It's really, really good. If your viewers don't have it, they should go get it. And you know, we'll be doing we'll be doing songs off every record. You know, um, right. but uh, all the usual suspects, of course, plus uh, you know some songs off uh, all of our records. It becomes kind of hard actually because there's so many songs. Um, over the couple of years that I've been really invested more into Buck Cherry, um, I'm telling people that I come across, um, I, I tell them how much more you guys are than lit up and crazy, but a lot of people are stereotyping you guys, unfortunately. And one of the songs I bring to their attention is like radio song. One of my favorite songs and even the, uh, um, the Greta Wilson, uh, tribute or, or excuse me. Uh, I don't even know what I'm thinking here. But that song you did with uh, Gretchen Wilson, excuse me, Gretchen Wilson was just amazing. Um, is there anything Thanks. about, yeah, no worries. I mean, it, I, I call it as it is. Um, do you find that as well, Josh, that some people kind of stereotype you for those two big, super massive worldwide hits back in the late 80s and uh, early 90s and think that that's all you're about? Because when I came across a lot of your music, I'm like, wow, these guys are deep. And I know you're the primary singer-songwriter, but... I don't think a lot of people actually uh, out there or some of them don't really realize how good of a songwriter you are and uh, you write ballads. Yeah, no, I mean, the ballads have always gotten lots of attention. We had a, we had a hit ballad on our first record with, for the movies. Uh, oh, you yeah. know, we had, Everything. we had sorry, which yeah. sorry almost sold as many singles as crazy bitch, you know? So yeah. I don't think about that at all. Um, I don't really, uh, I don't read any comments from people because, uh, positive or negative i just yeah. continue to move forward and and do me you know yeah. um i i that's the reason i got into this you know because i'm passionate about uh music you know and i'm always gonna continue to write music record music and and put my lyrics and melodies together in, in a way that i feel like um you know people can relate to it and and have a good experience and and that's all it's about, you know, like there's always going to be haters. There's always going to be people who love you. You know, there's always going to be people who say you're this or you're that. And, you know, you got to just stay away from all that. Well, I mean, I've learned that as well, to be honest with you. I remember we talked a couple of years ago. We talked about alcoholism because I've told you that I'm uh, an alcoholic and I, I have my struggles, but you're very open. And I found that refreshing that you were able to talk candidly about that. And I'm sure that you've helped a lot of people over the years indirectly are you still drinking and using uh no well i'm not uh, today and i haven't been uh, recently and i've never used to be let's honest. go good yeah. job man that's awesome i appreciate it and i remember telling somebody about uh, one thing that you said to me that solidified that you weren't bullshitting because some of these people will you use the word ironclad in the big book and to me it's like that was a aha moment he's not just saying this shit you actually do the research and i know that. You go to meetings when you're on the road, if you can. You've been doing Zoomers. Um, you know what? Um, what, can, what would you like to say to some of your fans that are uh, struggling? And um, not as a answer, but maybe a direction? Yeah, if you're a drug addict or an alcoholic, you know, your, your disease is either an asset or a liability, you know. So uh, you get to choose. You know what I mean? If yeah. you're going to pick up that... You know, all I know is that for me, you know, um, I can't uh, drink normally. 
like a normal human being, you know, um, I have a disease and, and once I start, I can't stop, you know, so I had to stop yeah. and I came to the crossroads in my life and I wanted it to be an asset in my life, not a liability. So, um, I work, you know, you got to work hard at it because, you know, you know what you're going to get when you drink and use drugs, you know, exactly the outcome you're going to get, you know, what it's going to bring to your life. And, you know, the other side of it is, um, the unknown is, you know, when you're sober, you have to really kind of fill that hole that you were filling with drugs and alcohol with a spiritual program. Mm -hmm. You know, a spiritual solution is, is the, the cure for drug and alcohol addiction. And, and then how do you do that? Well, you know, there's these great steps in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous that right. show you how to do that. And it's for fun and for free. And, uh, you know, you can have an amazing life, but you got to do the work. Right. Appreciate that, uh, Josh. And I'm, I'm sure uh, the viewers uh, in that boat and, uh, are questioning their lives right now will appreciate it. Uh, I, I can't believe the phlebotomy thing I, I read. And let's, let's hope that this isn't another rumor, but I think it's actually, uh, it's actually true. Uh, you're a certified phlebotomist, is that correct? I am, yeah. Explain to people who A, can't spell that, which I mean, I would have, a <laughs> and B, um, are not, don't know what that is. It's amazing. It's just a guy who draws, draws blood, you know, from people uh, and puts it in little vials. You know, uh, that's, that's all it is, but uh, you know, it, it is, uh, interesting to me. Don't ask me how I got interested in it. I was just getting blood at a blood bank yeah. or giving blood. Yeah. I, I go to this place called quest diagnostics in the States. That's mm -hmm. where I always give blood. I always go to the blood banks because they have phlebotomists there and they, they are the best at taking blood because they're doing it all day, you know? So, um, yeah. it's, it's very little pain and, uh, it just became interesting to me. And this big, like, tall, tattooed dude came in and took my blood one day, and I didn't even feel it. And, um, I just started becoming interested in the whole process mm -hmm. and would talk to him about it. I like really stuff. I, I get interested in things that aren't on the beat, you know, off the beaten path of music yeah. because I've done music my whole life. So I like I like learning new skills and stuff. And, um, and uh, yeah, so I became interested in it and then didn't think really much of it. And then COVID hit. And, um, I wanted to learn a new trade. I had all this time and I was going bananas and idle time is not good for me. You know, um, yeah. I had already made a new record and I just kept sitting around. And, uh, so I went to phlebotomy school for a couple of weeks and then I studied for the national exam and, right. and then I worked, I, I served in my community four months in downtown LA. I worked at a COVID clinic, you know, and, and, uh, at the peak of COVID, you know, uh, in December of 2020, that's when I started there. So, um, uh, it was awesome. You know, yeah. my father, when my father was alive, he, he was going to college when he was a young man and, and Vietnam hit and, uh, he, uh, he just went, he went into the army because he wanted to serve his country. And, you know, um, he didn't get drafted. He didn't have to go. And I always like admired him for that. You know, yeah. I thought that was like noble and brave of him. And right. so I wanted to do something, uh, you know, to serve my community because I had the time and, yeah. and uh, th that was like a good way for me to do it. Well, that's, that's awesome to hear, uh, Josh. I mean, um, COVID has changed people in so many ways. Um, I mean, it's been destructive uh, in a lot, collateral damage, but I mean, is there anything, and, I, and I, I'm kind of reading you pretty good, but I mean, is there anything in particular that sticks out that you know that if COVID hadn't hit, you wouldn't have adjusted a certain thing in your life, positive or negative? Has it brought out anything in particular? Yeah, I learned a lot about myself, you know, I learned a lot about uh, everything, because I've been on the road all the time, so to spend a lot of time with my in my home, you know, day in and day out was, I was not used to it. It was uh, a struggle at times, mm -hmm. um, had to address a lot of stuff in my marriage, had to address just uh, being with my kids 24 seven. They were out of school the whole time. It was really challenging for my wife and I just in that regard as well. Um, just a lot, a lot of things, you know, um, yeah. the whole financial uh, hit that we took from having a whole tour book to having it completely removed. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a lot, it's a lot of money, you know, a lot of stuff. And, um, so all those are really challenging. Um, it had, I had to really kind of go back to the basics, you know, and that is 
whenever things get intense for me in my life, I just know that what am I doing with my spiritual program? You know, because as long as I put a God of my understanding first Mm -hmm. and I put my program first, you know, my, uh, my, my sobriety and everything, then everything else, everything else in my life works out. So I had to go back to the basics, you know, working with others, working with others, you know, um, prayer and meditation, you know, uh, thinking of other people other than myself doing, doing, uh, doing things that, uh, weren't, uh, self-involved. Right. Well, that's, that's great to hear. Um, I was just talking to, uh, Ron Thal, um, actually about an hour ago and he, he's mentioned that, you know what, the COVID experience has taught him that, you know what, um, he's, he's going to be touring less. That's, that's his own thing that he's doing. And he said, because, being at home he's realized how much more there is to life than you know the music because he used to come home and not un- not unpack his luggage he'd go to the dentist and he'd yeah. visit for a bit and he'd go back out yep so he's uh um, yeah. it's changing that way so it's it's good to hear that uh things are going great for you um i won't keep you uh, very long i know it's only 10 in the morning uh, you're in uh, you're in cali right now correct yes sir Okay, well, um, you know what, Josh, we're looking forward to see you here in uh, Sault Ste. Maria. That's October 19th. Um, be great Let's to get finally, it. finally meet you. Yeah, man, um, Hellbound is, is awesome. I mean, Tim sent that to me, and that is great. Um, War Paint was great, and all your stuff is good. I mean, I'm not gushing here because I already got the interview, so I don't need to say shit that's not true. <laughs> um, yeah. No, no, man, I, I really appreciate that. You know, I mean, that's why we do this, because we um... – you know, we work, we labor and work really hard on the songwriting so that we can get that kind of reaction yeah. from the public. That, 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 that's like the icing on the cake for us. So I really appreciate it. Not a problem. Um, yeah. So until we see you in October, man, uh, all the best to you and your family. And uh, thanks a lot. You man. as well. Cheers. Stay healthy, man. Be good. Okay. Bye-bye.